Throughout this tutorial, I'll be showing you some methods for creating some quick render passes out of 3D Studio Max, importing them into Photoshop, and then compositing them for a presentation. Let's go ahead and get started. To start off, we need to set up our scene to capture the render passes correctly. We're going to go ahead and open up our rendering panel, which is in Render, Render Setup. In the Common tab, we're going to scroll down to the output size and change it from Custom to HDTV at 1280 by 720. We're going to then click on the Assign Render drop-down menu and choose Mental Ray from the dialog box. We can go ahead and close out of there for now. And we're going to now create a simple lighting rig. Go ahead and go Create Light Standard in the drop-down menu. And we could use an OmniLight, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be using the Mental Ray OmniLight, which has a few more options. In the Area Light Parameters drop-down menu, we are going to change the radius to 8. Once we've done that, I'm going to place it in the scene and give it some coordinates that I think will give it a nice angle alongside the model and will cast some really nice shadows and some really nice lighting. And we're going to create the second light, which is going to be a standard skylight at the multiplier or power of 0.54. We can go ahead and drop that anywhere in the scene, and we're going to create the materials now, which the first material is going to be just a very, very standard material. And we're going to rename that default and change the specular power, or the specular level, to around 40, and then we're going to edit the glossiness a little bit. The second material is going to be an ambient occlusion material. So the first thing that we need to do is click on the standard button and choose Mental Ray from the Mental Ray drop-down menu. And in the surfaces, we are going to choose from the Mental Ray drop-down menu the Ambient Reflective Occlusion Map. Inside of this map, we are going to change the samples to 64, the spread to 1.1, and the distance to 20. Once we've done that, we are now going to convert this into a composited material by clicking on Mental Ray again going up to our standard materials and choosing composite. We're going to go ahead and say keep old material as sub and we are going to then choose the mat 1 slot and from that we are going to choose a standard material. We're going to go ahead and rename this wire and then we are going to choose wire from the standard shader basic parameters. Choose a color black and then in the extended parameters, we're going to change the size. Now reducing the size is also reducing the thickness of the wire. We're going to go ahead and also change the opacity parameter by going back up to the parent material. And inside of the opacity, we're going to change it to roughly 55%. Once that's done, we can then open up our renderer panel again. And in the processing, we can turn on Material Override, which will take a material and use it to override all the materials in your viewport. We're going to go ahead and click and drag, drop an instance of our standard default shader quickly. And we're going to go ahead and render it out. Once we've rendered it, you'll get something similar to this. We will then click on the Save icon, choose our destination, and our naming convention. We will save it as a PNG with no alpha channel. Once done, we can then replace the material with our AO wire overlay. Go ahead and choose instance once again, and we'll render it out. Since it was with low settings, the wire won't be crisp and clear. Let's hit the save button. Choose a naming convention, and there will be no alpha channel on this pass either. We can then go to our AO wire material and deactivate our mat 1 slot, leaving just the ambient occlusion. Let's go ahead and re-render it, and since it was instanced, the update is automatic. You should have something that looks relatively like this in the end. Click on save. Choose a naming convention, and on this render pass, we will save an alpha channel. 
We can then take these passes into Photoshop and start to edit and composite them. Once in Photoshop, we are going to relocate those files. Let's go ahead and hit File, Open. We'll select all the files. Go ahead and hit Control A to select our first pass. Hit Control C to copy it to the clipboard. We can go ahead and kill this because it's no longer of use to us. And we will paste that into this document by hitting Control B. And we will unlock the background layer and rename our layers. Giving them a naming convention is always a good idea. Keeps things structured and looking nice. We'll then go ahead and select both of those layers and group them. And we can rename the group something to keep it a little bit more organized. If you right click on a group, you can actually duplicate that group and you can choose the destination and the destination can be any document that's inside of Photoshop or the document it already exists in. I'm going to choose the first image and click OK and it'll send it to that location. And we can then kill this file because we no longer need it. And there's the existing file within that document. We'll drag that last layer up into that group and rename it. Once renamed, we need to rearrange the stack so that we can composite them correctly. We'll first grab a hold of the AO wire and drag that above the diffuse, and then the normal ambient occlusion will be above the AO wire and the diffuse. Next thing that we need to do is mask out our black background so we can control left click on the thumbnail which gives us these marching ants or our selection around that alpha channel. We can then select the layer that we want to mask it out of and click on the mask button. We'll then repeat that process for the diffuse layer. Once done, we're going to create another background and rename that BG. Using the paint bucket tool, I can then recreate that background that we've taken out of the other two images. Go ahead and choose a black color and dump that on that new layer. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and set that AO to multiply and the AO wire as well to multiply and this will help to really bring out those crevices and the details within the model. Also cranking down the wire will help to kind of fade it out which gives it a nice texture. And now I'm going to duplicate that group and rename it something like sharpen. Now it's important to sharpen out your renders because whenever they come out of Max, they tend to be pretty soft. You lose a lot of the edge details and some of the details such as the gears. So it's always smart to sharpen your renders a little bit to help bring that out. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Filter, Sharpen, Unsharpen Mask. And for the purposes of this, we're going to use 500 for the amount and 0.3 for the radius, but it can change depending on the document and the image and the details. Already you can see that it's brought out a lot of those little details inside of the model. It might still be too harsh, so we can then drop down the opacity to kind of blend it in a little bit more. And then jump into the group and drag that sharpen on top of the whole stack. That way everything is a little bit more organized. Now that we've finished this render pass and composited it correctly, we're going to create a new document that is going to house our full composition. Go ahead and switch our units to inches. Our width is going to be roughly 32.5 and our height is going to be roughly 10.5. And click OK and we're now in our new document. I'm going to then duplicate this group by right clicking and hitting duplicate and choosing the destination of that new untitled one document and click OK. The group is now sent to that new document and we can place it and rearrange it how we want. Here I have done the same thing that I did on the first composition but I did it for another view that I captured of my 3D model. 
And I've also grabbed a front and back view with just ambient occlusion renders. What we're now going to do is try to make this pop off of the canvas a little bit more by adding some drop shadows that are hard, but they have a low opacity. On the front view here, I'm going to double click on the diffuse bottom layer. And in the layer styles, I'm going to click drop shadow. Pull the opacity back a good amount. The distance, I'm going to go ahead and push it out a lot so that it pops more off of the page. And the size, we're going to bring it inwards to make it a sharp, crisp edge. We'll click OK. I'm going to right click and I am going to choose Copy Layer Style from the drop down menu. We can now go into each of the individual groups and on the base layers we can say Paste Layer Style. Once again, on the flat front layer, we can paste that layer style. And also on the back, we can paste that layer style. We can now close down our groups to maximize our workspace. We're going to create a new layer and rename it Strip. Using our rectangular marquee tool located at the upper left hand corner, I'm going to drag a strip across our document that is going to single out those two elements or that front and back render. Then using the paint bucket tool, I'm going to dump a darker gray color onto that new layer. I'm going to deselect, unlock the background layer, and give it a name for naming convention's sake and dump a light gray color onto it. Then to help that strip kind of pop we are going to double click it to open up the layer styles and add a stroke with a size of about 2 and a low opacity. Once again this will just help it to kind of pull itself away from that background layer. We're going to then right click on this strip layer and duplicate it, set the destination to new. And we need to change the image mode from 16 bit to 8 bit so that we have access to all of the filters. We're then going to use filter, pixelate, and there are a lot of things you can mess with in here, but for now we're going to use color halftone. For each channel, we're going to set it to about 15. And for the max radius, we're going to set it to 5. And this will create a very small kind of dotted grid texture that we can then use in the other document. We're going to then reduplicate that group and send it back to the untitled one document. Once back in the document, you'll see that we have the copy on top of the original. And I then set it to multiply and drop the opacity to make it blend in a little bit better with that background. And then select both of our layers and drag them into a group and rename it. Once done, I am going to create a new document and change the measurement to inches. And the width is going to be 34 inches, which is going to be wider than the document. And the height is going to be 2 inches. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is click on our custom shape tool. And we are going to change our mode to paths. I've loaded up a custom shape of an arrow, which can also be done by right clicking and loading up arrows and clicking append. If you click OK, it'll overwrite it. So holding Shift and left clicking and dragging, I'm bringing that shape out onto the canvas. I'm going to then go to Paths and double click on the working path and give it a name to save that. We'll just call it Arrow. Now we can left click while holding the Control 
and get the selection around that custom shape. On a new layer, I am going to then use a black color and dump that in with the paint bucket tool. We can deselect that. And the next thing is we're going to duplicate that. And we are going to move it slightly to the right. We can then merge this layer down by right clicking and merging down or hitting control E. We're going to duplicate it and repeat the process. We're going to keep doing this until we have arrows that are completely covering the whole canvas. We can then rename this to arrows and right click this duplicate the layer and send it back to the original document. We can kill that now since it's no longer of any use to us. And we can see that we have our arrows loaded up. I'm going to reposition it to where I think it'll fit. Make a duplicate and drag that down so it's mirrored across that strip. We're then going to take both of those layers, group them, and rename them. After that, we're going to start to add adjustment layers to try to bring the vibrance and the levels out more in this composition, as well as add color. First adjustment layer that we are going to add is going to be a levels adjustment layer. We're going to try to pull the black and white values in a little bit to really try to crank up the value range and to suck as much as we can out of this composition. We're then going to add a color balance adjustment layer and I'm going to be going for a little bit of a bluish green color. So in the shadows I'm going to tweak some of the scions and some of the greens and blues to try to get that correct color composition that I would like. I'm also going to tweak some of the highlights. I'm going to add a little bit of green Going to add a little bit of yellow. Now we're going to add a vibrance adjustment layer. We're going to kick the vibrance up to really try to bring those colors out even more. And then we're going to pull the saturation up. We're going to add some simple text now to kind of help the design to better portray itself. And it's just something that you can do. Uh, it's not required, but sometimes in certain things, especially whenever you're doing schematics or a uh, type of schematic design, adding text really helps to carry that, that visual aesthetic. You can reposition those. Once we have them relatively where we want them, we're then going to give them a little bit of a glow. So we're going to select both those layers and duplicate them. Right click and rasterize type. Once we've done that, we can then edit these using a filter. So I'm going to collapse those down and hit filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we want to try to keep this in a good range. So something around three is good. And then we're going to paste our previous layer style with the drop shadow onto both of the text layers. We can then group all this together and rename it. Once we rename the group, we're going to drop down to our arrows folder and we're going to lower the opacity so it's not so bold. The next thing that we want to add is a border around our document but we do not want it to overlap anything. So we're going to hit image, canvas size. I'm going to resize it by adding 0.5 inches to both of the width and the height measurements. When we hit OK, we can see that there is now a border built around our composition. I'm going to create a new layer and drag it to the bottom of the stack. Rename it. 
and drop a color black onto that layer using our bucket tool. Once we've done that, we can then add any other little things such as logos or little designs to our composition to finish it off. I'm going to go ahead and kind of slide that logo over to the bottom right where it's got some vacant space. And rearrange the location in the stack where that logo is placed. And we'll zoom up and tweak it just a little bit. The next thing is that background strip is a little bit dark. So what I want to do is I want to dump a lighter gray color into that and see if I can't get a little bit better of a color contrast instead of having it so dark. It almost takes away from the composition in a way. And that's a little bit too light, so I'm going to go for a little bit of a, a darker gray. Once we have that set and we're satisfied with the composition, we can then select all of our layers and groups and create one parent directory and rename it. Once that's done, we have finished the composition.